Hey, Brad, good to see you. Good to be here in South Dakota. It's great to have you here. Welcome to God's country. Indeed. Um, why don't, you know, so you've been working on building out the GeoNet network here yeah. in South Dakota. Maybe you could give a little update on how that's going. It's been going well. We've got about 35 stations up and I've uh, been just working on implementing a lot of egg users, construction and survey users this spring and making sure everything's working really well to keep growing this coming year. Super, super. So yeah, I think you kind of transition now, it sounds like, into a mode where you're more focused on attracting users to yep. the network you've built. And maybe you could talk a little about what, what some of the top use cases has been for you in, in the last year. Yeah, uh, main use case has been agriculture because we have a lot of big farms, big equipment, and uh, they're all using precision GPS mm -hmm. for that. Um, construction is starting to take off too with getting more survey rovers and uh, construction equipment with grade control. So we're just getting the word out there and uh, the product proves itself. So the service proves itself basically. Yeah, yeah. So in the ag market, what are, the, what are the, some of the features on GeoNet that customers you found really like about GeoNet relative to say a John Deere SF signal or other signals that they may have used in the past? Yeah, definitely speed accuracy and reliability, redundancy, um, as far as the coverage and network goes. Um, yesterday, we actually just talked to a guy and he could only spray with his big four wheel sprayer at about five or six miles an hour. And he goes, since we switched over now, I've never sprayed at eight miles an hour, but we sprayed at eight miles an hour and never lost a fix or anything. So that's really cool. Yeah. So the reason that's going on and what what makes GeoNet sort of unique on this is because we have all the satellites and we have a nice high speed network yep. uh, backbone. You're able to actually keep up with all the things going on in the ionosphere, all the satellite clock and orbit errors in real time, get that data down to the rover so it can maintain that fix at a higher speed. Whereas some of the traditional old school RTK and uh, L band correction networks are very low speed. That means they can't, or they don't even have the data. Some of the base stations will be out of date. They don't have all the data for all the satellites. That means it's harder to maintain lock and that, that gets tested and strained more mm -hmm. in things like <laughs> operating at higher speeds or uh, conditions like a space weather storm. Um, these are times when those older networks will lose reliability and something like a geodet can just work really well. So it's great to see that people are actually experiencing that in the field here. Oh, it's incredible. I tell people it's like trying to stream Netflix on dial up internet is what you've been doing. And by switching over, it's you can actually stream Netflix on a on a high speed internet connection. Yeah. And they're like I didn't realize my equipment could do this. So it's opening up stuff they didn't realize was available. How do people feel about the ROI on using GeoNet? Um, it works great. I mean, it's an incredible model and it mm -hmm. brings affordability to all parties involved. So we had talked some about survey last night at dinner and yep. it seems like the survey use case is picking up and you have some guys helping you resell the service into the survey market but some of them felt it was like too cheap and that's can you talk a little bit been, about that that's been the biggest battle is uh price point is the, the it's weirdly it seems to apply is there a lot of people think it's too cheap and they're like oh there's must be something wrong with it or right. it's a scam or something like that but once they hook up to it um and see how quick you get right. your fix and all of the different right. things that they've done for years. They're like, wait, whoa, what is this? It's literally like, I'm telling you, it's going from dial up to high speed fiber. Right. And so one of your, I guess this, the survey dealer, he, he found a novel solution to this problem. What was that? On, uh, on the, on the, on the cost. Oh yeah. So we just raised the price. There you go. <laughs> we just raised the price. So that was kind of fun. Yeah. Instead of, you know, our, competitor, main competitor in our area is around $2,000 a year. So he just raised it to 1500 and all of a sudden he's selling subscriptions. So you never know this day. Yeah, marketing is funny that way sometimes. Sometimes if people associate price and value and they don't want the low price. So, you know, that's one of the benefits of the yep. GeoNet reseller model. It's 50-50 rev share, you know, and different markets have different, different strokes for different folks. And so in a place where people are used to paying a lot more and they really just want better service, better reliability, no need to necessarily always be at the lowest possible cost. Yeah, his theory too was, uh, you know, a lot of the, this is a small piece of like a farmer, a surveyor's 
um, expenses. Right. And so they kind of like to get the newest, best stuff, and they kind of brag between each other. And he's like, you should actually charge more than what competitors are charging because it is faster. And he goes, it actually would be kind of fun to test that because mm -hmm. I think it would actually accelerate that too. But Yeah, and another benefit of that for the end customer is then you can you know, have more service get out there. Yeah. You can spend more time with them, training them. So there's a real benefit to the end user in this yep. case too. So that's a great model. The subscription side is, that's one part, and then it's the... The actual being able to help service if they need something with that specific piece of hardware um, <clears throat> has been our main focus this spring and summer and going into the fall is we've got so many different brands of equipment running on it mm -hmm. and not everyone knows how to service or add unlocks or different things to that so we're trying to build a full package where if it's anything if you're in agriculture construction survey that you need anything we can either find it we've got partners whatever and just full service so so we've talked about ag we've talked about construction and survey what about drones i saw on your usage map all kinds of <coughs> dji drones on there what's going on with all the drones in the sky of south dakota um the drones in the sky not the ones on the news that no one knows what they are <laughs> um there's been incredible um amount of spray drones a lot of farmers and uh, pretty much all farmers are using spray drones for chemical application and it makes a lot of sense in my mind um, but it's been incredible to see how many of them we see hooked up on the network throughout the summer yeah these spray drones they are something else right they're, they're miniature no helicopters right they are they're not, not a, a, they are not a toy camera drone these are serious machines and they can go spray if they if everything's wet, if the plants are too tall, uh, they can go spray over water where your conventional sprayers can't do it. So there's mm -hmm. a huge, huge implementation of that we're seeing. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Yeah, so do you have any um, sort of thoughts on what's next, where, where, you, where you see things going over the next year for your business here in South Dakota? Yeah, this next year, this first year was kind of the proof of concept to our uh, group of customers we currently have that we've converted over um, and with all the awesome feedback it's we're going 100 percent to go bring on more people now that we know we've been through all kinds of different things as far as uh, different hardware making sure everything's working mm -hmm. modems connectivity coverage areas and now we're confident moving forward sounds great well we look forward to it and we look forward to continuing to grow here in the state of South Dakota. And we have lots of big plans to expand usage of GeoNet across the world, but it's great to see it here in the Midwest being so successful with traditional large-scale farming operations, construction, survey. Oh, one last thing, Brad. Why is South Dakota doing this construction boom? What is going on with that? Because it's the best place to live. Wait it a is, second, wait a second. It's the best. You just, you got to come see it yourself. It's beautiful. Yeah, but what about California? So the only thing California has on us, I would say, is uh, the weather, you know? And if you like it just being 72 degrees all the time, great. But I love four seasons. And I, I also say. like not having, you know, state employment tax and wait, wait, income wait, wait, tax. Wait. And You're saying there are lower taxes in South Dakota? Yeah, You're we, saying it's a more friendly business environment we, here? We that, can't, that can't don't, be. Don't tell everyone because then we'll have way too many people moving here. But uh, no, we have some of the best, uh, the best environment for businesses and for people to live. And cost of living is incredibly, incredibly affordable. Huh. Yeah. So we'll start looking at houses later today if you want. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, it's good to hear it. South Dakota's doing so great. And uh, again, congrats on your business Thank progress you. and look forward to our continued collaboration in the future. Perfect. Thank you. GeoNet. Mind the sky.